Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. Welcome to the house I grew up in. This is where we built the tiny lab, and while we were here, there was a concern because we're in Florida, and Florida is mostly resting on limestone, or on swamps, but the limestone is really good at off-gassing radon. And radon is something that obviously a lot of people are concerned about with concern uh, being warranted or without. It's just a kind of a scary thing that everybody's spooked about. So we're going to show you how to get proof because proof is possible in all things with homes. And that is what we are concentrating as far as the diagnostics goes. So today what we're going to do is uh, test whether or not we should be concerned and how much radon is actually coming into the house. So you can see right out here, that is where we built the tiny lab uh, over the winter last winter. So now that we're touring the country, I'd like to show you that this, where uh, my videographer is standing, come on out of there, is the wing where my bedroom, my brother's bedroom when we were growing up is located. Now in order to keep teenagers, smelly teenagers and noisy teenagers from bothering everybody else, we have a door here that concentrates all of the noise and the mess and the sounds back there. Uh, now we lived back there with our two cats and with our baby. And so the radon thing, especially with a baby, became a big deal to me. Um, now there was a concern that the exhaust fans in bathrooms would be a thing that we needed to worry about. That what you're mainly trying to concentrate on is stopping the contaminants from coming into the house. And if they do get into the house, making sure that they get out uh, as well as possible. So we have two things. One is we try not to have any cracks in the slab. There are going to be cracks in the slab. And also, we have a radon mitigation system underneath this house, but it wasn't installed at the very get-go, uh, meaning they have this bed of gravel and they install a big long line that sucks on everything equally, and then there's a fan that's spewing all the stuff that's underneath the house to outside. What we did is come in later, after we were concerned about the radon, and dig a couple of holes and then put the fan tubes in there. Nobody really knows, but it's hard to get proof as far as that goes. What we could do is drill down through the slab, if we really wanted to, and test the pressure and see if the fans were actually depressurizing the dirt underneath the slab. Uh, probably not as good as doing it at the get-go. So, now that we have another depressurization source in the house, these bath fans, we want to know whether the bath fans themselves are sucking on the radon gases and bringing them into the house when we run the bath fans, which you want to run your bath fan, but maybe it makes us nervous. So let's find out exactly what's going on. Now this is called a dual channel digital manometer. This is a Retrotech DM32. Uh, it's like my smartphone, but it's for pressures. So this number right here is what we're looking at. Now each one is about the weight of a post-it note, if you were to kind of use that simple analogy. So negative 1.4, not a lot. We don't need to worry about that. That's not a big problem. However, in this same wing, we have this, which is the control for our air conditioner and heating system, obviously. The main return of which is right there. So now we want to know what that is doing to the house. And again, proof is possible. We can know this for a fact. So once we close that off, you can see that that pressure negative 12-ish is something that we might be more concerned about. So now we have ruled out the bath fans as being something that we should be concerned about and ruled in the air conditioning system of the house itself as something that could potentially draw those radon gases in. So now that we know that this is possible, let's find out how much radon is actually coming into the house. This is the second tool that we're talking about today. This is a Corentium radon monitor. This is the only continuous radon monitor in the world, and our friends at True Tech Tools made us aware that this thing even existed. It's awesome. So most radon tests that you would order are going to be a sample of one particular point in time, a three-day or a five-day or seven-day span. Um, but what happens during that five days, if you accidentally, oops, open up all the windows in the house because like, it's a beautiful day, it kind of wipes out all of the data of your test. So this thing is going to continuously monitor what is going on in the house. And it's fascinating to watch that some days it's as low as one, and some days it's as high as six. You want the number to be about four, and that's four picocuries. Uh, you don't need to know what that means, but that's the safety number that has been set. So right now, our long-term average over the entire life of when we've turned this thing on is 0.32, which is great. The seven day average is 1.5. The one day average is 5.3, which does exceed the four. So now we know 
that there is in fact some radon coming into the house. It sometimes exceeds the safety limits that are set. And especially when we close this door with the air conditioning on, which happened every night while we were here until we figured out, ooh, we need to not do that. We need to relieve the pressure. Now we know that we either are safe or are not safe and can do something about it. So proof is possible. Please stop guessing about all of this stuff and find out for sure whether you have a problem or do not have a problem. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped you. Please subscribe to our channel. Please come see the tiny lab when it comes to your town. Tune in next time.